Hello, today we're going to be going over to 2024 Avenir 17BH and we're going to just be starting right up front here. Basically this guy here is going to be your manual crank to get on and off your tow trailer and also to level the camper from front to back. I do always like to recommend while you're still hooked to the tow vehicle, make sure you're level from side to side. Normally we'll just put a carpenter's level right inside the door and you might have to put a block on one side to elevate it to try to make sure you're getting level from side to side. They also have little stick on levels you can put on the side of your car. But once again, you do want to make sure the camper is completely level when you put those on so they are accurate. Once you have done that, then you would lower, you know, pretty much level front to back. And then you're going to lower your stabilizers. Those guys are located on each corner of the camper. On a single axle, it is really important that you do have to make sure that all four of these guys are generally down. At this time, I do only have one down in the back side just for this video. Uh, that way it isn't trying to rock around on us when we go inside. Next, you're going to have your one 20-pound propane tank. This guy has been filled minus what we use to test the propane system with. Uh, you do have a nice, decent-sized hose here. So if you were wanting to try to upgrade this to a 30-pound tank because it sits a little taller, it looks like you do have enough room to do that. But you do have, basically the only thing that's gonna be operating off this is the stove. And then we have our battery located back here, just a 24 series deep cycle marine RV style battery, pretty standard for these guys, for these kind of campers. All right, as we come around to our side over here, basically you're just gonna have your pass through compartment. I got the other side open as you can see. Come a little further down. As you see, we do have the wheels chalked. It is important. You always want to make sure you chalk the wheels, especially on that single axle, even after you've got your stabilizer jacks down. Um, one thing you do need to know with these guys, these guys always need to be topped off to their max PSI level, which I believe these guys are a 65 PSI. Let me just look at that to confirm. 65 PSI. You also do want to make sure that you are checking their lug nuts at roughly 50, 100, and 200 miles. And this guy is a 21 millimeter and you want to torque him to a hundred foot pounds. Next, you got your 30 amp power cable, just feeds right inside. This here says cable. So there is no antenna on the roof. Uh, so basically this is set up, it's designed for park cable. You would hook it up and then you can hook the TV up to the inside. Next, you're gonna have your black tank flush. This guy here is basically a sprayer inside the black tank, sprays around and gets all your nastiness out. Basically, you're going to use this guy whenever you are you whenever you are dumping the black tank. Okay. You always want to make sure that valve is also in the open position, like it is now down here. You got the black handle for the black tank, and we have these guys open the drain. Go ahead and close that. So you'd open your black first drain, hook up your flush, start flushing. Once you're seeing clear water coming out of your sewer hose that you got hooked up onto this guy, you're going to turn off your water, close your line, and then I always recommend unhook the hose from the water spigot first, uh, so that way that water can try to drain out of there. On the back side of that guy is usually going to be a hose that goes to the check valve for that black tank flush. So there's going to be water in that hose on the other side of this. It's going to drain out. So unhook the hose from the main water spigot to let that water drain out. Once you're done with the black, then you're going to close, off, close that off and open the gray to kind of help rinse out your sewer hose. And then always make sure your cap's on during travel. All right. Come around to us back. It does have the option for a observational backup camera. We're trying to park it into a camping lot or spot. Over here, like I said, I got the one jack down. This guy here is your manual crank handle. It is a three quarter socket. I always recommend putting it on a drill and use a drill. Do not use an impact. Next, you're going to have your water heater. Your water heater here is basically electric only. So the only reason why I'm open to show you this is when you are done, you're going to open this guy to relieve the pressure. And you're going to take this out. This is your anode rod. This guy starts out the side, starts out it's the size of a dime, and then work itself down to the size of a coat hanger. What it's doing is basically tracking the impurities in the water, so it attacks that rod and not the tank because it is a steel tank. 
that is a one and one sixteenth socket to remove that. And then you're also able to inspect it so you know when it's time to get a new one. Next, we're gonna have your city water hooked up. It is always recommended you wanna make sure you have a pressure regulator on the water spigot at the main. From there, your options have an inline water filter and then your water hose and then hook up to here. From there, you're basically ready to use the water system inside except for the hot water until it has filled in the tank. Next, you have your fill for your fresh water, or fresh water tank. Basically, this is for the water you take with you so if the campsite didn't have a water source to hook up to, you can fill this tank and then you're able to use uh, the water in that in there and you can use that off the water pump and we'll show you that when we step inside. And then our drain for him is going to be located right down here, just a little churn knob. You just turn that, open it, and drain it. As you see, there's a little water still left over from when we drained it. And then on the back side over here, those guys are what you consider to be your low point lines. Basically, you got red for hot, blue for cold. So generally, when you're done camping, you always want to try to get all the water out of your camper. Uh, I always like to recommend opening up those valves, and then you'll go inside and open each, each faucet just for a few seconds to kind of help release that water to get it out of the lines. That way it doesn't become potentially stagnant or bad. Uh, it's also used when you go to winterize your camper as well. Then we have the other side of our pass-through storage compartment. We do have our awning here. It is actually quite breezy today, so I'm not going to be able to open it and show it to you, but we will talk about it in just a moment. So I do have your awning lights on so you can see those guys. Basically, your step here is simple. It just kind of lifts and slides and locks into place. That's all there is for it. This guy here, so... keys your purple key here is going to be for your door handle for the door handle lock itself you turn the key to the right and then it locks the handle itself for the deadbolt you have to turn the key to the left you'll hear that click tells you it locks into place you're not able to pull that key out when you go to unlock it if you turn it to the right you're able to pull that key out it shows that you did not lock your deadbolt and then the gray key is going to be for your compartment doors. All right, as we step inside, you're always going to have your fire extinguisher located right here at the entry door. Down here is going to be where your tanks are or your tank monitor. It tells you your battery status, fresh tank, black tank, and gray tank. This here is going to be for the water heater. For the electric side make sure there is water in it before you turn this on if not you will burn out that element and then this side here is for the water pump you're only using the water pump when you're using that fresh water tank if you're hooked to city water you do not need that guy all right next this guy here is going to be the, the bring your awning in and out extend and retract this, then you got your light switch. This one here is going to be for your inside lights. The other one is going to be for your awning lights. At the door, this handle here so you can lock your deadbolt at night. So that way you can at least lock your door. All right, we're going to just swing around here. Over here is where you would basically mount your TV mount and then you hook up. Once again, there is no antenna, so there is no antenna booster. Uh, you have to be hooked up to some kind of park cable or satellite potential uh, possibly for that feed then you got the 110 hookup you do got storage up above and then basically it looks like they got that part sealed it is that's a pretty nice feeling mattress it is uh next you got your air conditioner over here uh basically you're just going to turn it to whatever setting you want to use you got low fan on it on on the top side and low cool and you got high cool and high fan and then you got your temperature setting here. It is pretty cold today. That guy, uh, I don't even know if he would even fire up, to be honest with you. <laughs> it is a little chilly today. Uh, 83 yesterday and 40 today. Uh, so then you got more storage up above. You got cabinet in here as well. This window here is a fire exit window. It's designed so if there was a fire, you guys couldn't make your way to the door. You're just going to pop this guy open right here. And it will pop open and it can even open it turn on your bathroom fan creates a little attic flow during the springtime 
kind of help circulate some air. Our table, basically with the table, it always sits down in this position for travel because you got the sides here that's going to help keep it in place. But then basically you just have two feet that would fold out to set it up for whenever you're going to be eating. Then you got your fuse control panel box. Basically everything that power wise will be in here. Uh, you got everything on the 110 side. So like your air conditioner, fireplace, microwave, things like that. Those are going to be on the breakers. Everything that runs off your battery will be on your fuses. And they do have everything labeled for you as well. Tell you which one is which. Uh, as you see, it looks like the AC and fireplace is on the same circuit. So you cannot run them both at the same time. But realistically, I don't know why you'd be trying to do that. All right. So then we got our bunk bed area here. There is storage underneath as well. Another fire exit window. There is a caution here for up to 200 max pounds on this on the top bunks and also on the bottom. Next, we got our LP and carbon monoxide detector. Uh, basically, you do want to try to test this guy every 7 to 14 days, uh, just making sure that it's working. Uh, if it's sensing propane, it will go off. There are other things that causes that to go off, like uh, cleaning chemicals, hairspray, uh, and I've even heard animal gases can also cause that to go off. But you do want to make sure you test it. And all you got to do is just, there's a button right here that you push. And it's going to perform its test. That guy will go off again there. And then it's going to make a different sound for the other side. And then it goes back to green. Right there, we have already performed the test. Nice and simple. And then back here is just going to be the bathroom. You got your vent here, uh, and then your toilet. With the toilet, whenever you're going to use your toilet, you would lightly press on this pedestal, and it will add water so you can do your business. All the way down, it's going to flush. It's always going to leave some water in there. Now, one thing we didn't talk about outside was basically every time you're going to be using your camper, you do want to make sure you have a cleaning chemical in the black tank. They got a liquid. With a liquid, it's usually two ounces will treat a 40 gallon tank. And I don't think that tank would be that big on this little guy. But basically, you know, if you want it strong, you can put two ounces in there. And then other people will use pouches. If you're going to use a pouch, I do always recommend trying to fill the bowl with at least halfway with water. And then put that pouch in and make sure it dissolves. I have seen it where some of them pouches have not dissolved. You go to empty your tank and you see that whole pouch just come out. Uh, then next, you're going to have your tub slash shower. And then you do have a light switch right here to turn your bathroom light on and off. Next, we got our microwave. Microwave is pretty self-explanatory. I would like to say you would set your time. You guys go out and do stuff. You come back, you see your time ain't set. It shows there was a power failure at your camper or power loss. You do want to try to find out, though, if that was from the campsite itself or from the electric company. Uh, surges can cause damage to campers if you're not careful. The next you got your fridge. It's got a little freezer up top for a few items. And then to turn it on and off, zero is obviously the off position. And from there you would just turn this to what desired temp you would need it at. And there is instruction manual in that bottom drawer as well. Then we got our sink, basically for doing our dishes. You got a drawer underneath for storage and then more storage up above. And then down here is going to be our fireplace. So with the fireplace here, you got your controls here, but they are also on here. You got your power button to turn it on and off. Sometimes the remote's got it kind of touchy. You got it. The remote can be touchy sometimes. It, it wants, doesn't want to sometimes work with you. Uh, next, or you got to hold your tongue out right. Uh, next, you got a flame icon, icon so you can kind of change the color of the flames in the back. And it's got a couple of different settings and brightnesses. Then you got the timer set here. So it goes from 30 minutes to nine hours. So if you just wanted to shut off on its own. And then your other one here is going to be for your temperature. So double zero is just going to have this ambiance look. And then you have low and high. And then it does also have where it's preset 
to maintain at 86 degrees. I don't understand why it's preset like that, but I couldn't, I even on the buttons or on the remote, I couldn't get that temperature to change. If you're a Harry Potter fan and your remote won't work, you can always resort to Lumos. There you go. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna have our stove. When you're using the stove, you do have to have a barbecue lighter uh, to light this guy. There is no spark igniter on this. And then I would recommend that you do want to make sure this is open and your fan is on. Uh, that way it's got that heat isn't going to over time cause damage to your paneling up here. Because that can't happen. And then from there we have basically made our way back to the door. Hopefully this video was knowledgeable and informational for you. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to call us and we do our best to answer those questions for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day. All right, so we're going to talk about winterizing our coach. Now, there's a couple different ways here. Uh, I took the drawer out, but you can actually remove this panel here if you wanted to. But on the other side of here is going to be where your water pump is located for like when you're using the fresh water tank. So when you go to winterize, there's going to be a valve right here on the other side. It would be easier with this panel off, but you're going to turn that line to where basically the pump ain't trying to pull water from the fresh water tank. And then your other one is going to be located right there towards the back. And that's the one you're going to churn to where it will pull antifreeze from this hose right here. Now when you go to winterize, you do also have to make sure that you bypass the water heater. And that's going to be removing this panel here. And there's going to be, I believe, three valves on this one that you will have to churn. Or two. I think it might have been two. And then from there, you're just going to pump the antifreeze th uh, through your lines. Always start with the hot side first and then do cold. Uh, and you're gonna start from the furthest point. So basically you would start either at the bathtub or the toilet and then to the sink.